Definitely, I think going to be a fun match. They they can definitely crack open some some pretty tough shells. And G2 is perhaps one of the toughest in North America at the moment. The biggest hurdle I think Fury's got to get through Atomic. That guy was a facilitator versus version one. If he keeps that speed up, he even find himself uh, able to get a hold of whatever Yanks is throwing at people. Oh, JNAP throwing one right at Yan, and that's easy. Well, relatively easily sent away when all is said and done. And we are started off with a bang here between G2 and Furia. Winner into the top eight yet again. Loser still got two shots at it. JNAPS with Atomic kind of clearing the way in front. Hard up as is Kayo. And we talked a lot last time these two teams played back in the fall open about just how exhausting it has to be to play against either of these squads. Mm -hmm. And I can't imagine this is going to be any different. This is a big wake up call, I think, for both of them. Easily their toughest challenge of the event so far. Yeah, definitely agree. A little floater from Atomic. Tester for Kayo. Don't uh, mismanage your speed on the backboard, but I, I would agree because they're two teams that really do make you think about every single touch that you make on the ball. And that can be very mentally taxing to have to constantly think about exactly what needs to be done to break through. It's tough to play against either of these squads. Hard around Atomic with JNAPS jumping up at midfield. So many layers of defense on both sides. The rotations on point more often than not. This is trouble though as Chicago had to avoid Kayo. This goes out to the wing. Card bringing it right back in. Chicago's got that right out to Kayo, mm. who will pick their pocket, and Kayo gets the opening goal. Not the first time today we've seen Kayo make a nice, aggressive turn in the midfield to go for one. Chicago, not the perfect touch, isn't able to go straight back into the corner with Card. His only option is towards the middle. Unfortunately, Kayo wheeling back around after stealing that opposite corner boost. Has a pretty clean look on net and doesn't disappoint. Chicago just walking right in and yet at the last possible moment making the save. Good outlet out towards Card. Had to wait a moment and he'll take out Chicago. Man advantage for Furia. Kyle's right there with Chicago spawning in. That forced him to make an action and JNAP's there as the second layer of defense. Sending one downfield. Chicago not quite able to set up Atomic. Man, and you like to see Card really try and run interference on Atomic there in the midfield as well because it was a little awkward to handle over on the, the Fury defensive side, so to take away that support from G2 in the midfield, right play. That feels like physical play. Point of oh. emphasis for Fury as Jan missed what by his standards would be a sitter, and you know he's gonna want that one back. He may get an opportunity in the near future as that gets by Jamps. Chicago forced into action. Kyo to center and Chicago cut it out. It, you are kind of seeing the, the big difference there between version one and Furia in what G2 has to handle because Furia is not the team to try and sit there, turtle up on defense and try and outlast you. They're trying to come right at you and say, stop us if you can. And that extra level of aggression, G2 is having to make some adjustments for right now. Furia coming in, averaging about three and a half demos a game. G2. Almost five demolitions, and we haven't seen much of that against Furia. Maybe just a little too quick to catch up to. Yan from the ceiling. JNAP's the initial stop, and Chicago will collect. Atomic, right at Kayo. Well defended again. G2 back to the drawing board. Trying to bait some of these Fury defenders oh, into a bad touch. As Jan will sweep one away, and this careens all the way out beyond midfield, and Card can chase it down with a full tank of boost, looking for the flip reset as well, Ooh. and that was in the vicinity of Jan, and on another day, he might have reacted in time to throw it right back network. Yeah, very speculative positioning from both teams. Chicago kind of just ranging to the opposite side of the net, almost cracked through the defense. Yanks being aggressive, kind of camped out in the middle of the box there. Maybe something comes his way, and neither of them able to turn one in. The only difference is time dwindling down. It's G2 who needs to score. Uh-oh, card. Getting one oh. central. Jan with the interception. Ding. That sets up Kayo right between the eyes. And Jan actually has G2 downloaded. 
and he figured that out. He was thinking initially when he jumps, like, okay, I'm going to go pressure, maybe try and score. And he sees while he's halfway to it, like, oh, I'm going to have to make an adjustment, see if I can get a block. And boy, did he size that one up perfectly. Like you said, downloaded it. Kayo with both goals. Oh, hot. Both from great setups and another near miss as Jan makes the save right at the goal line. G2 have had their opportunities, but the Furia defense has just been good enough. Chicago ahead to Atomic, lining up a double. Oh, he scores it. A G2 catches them leaning here in the midfield. Look how far forward you just saw him at the bottom of the screen. Jan was, he was all the way on the G2 half. Didn't expect a pass to actually get broken out towards the side. And that's why he's not able to go up and challenge as that touch is going towards the back wall. He has to go out the inside of the net and Atomic's going to hit a perfect shot. A goal like that is going to make you think about it Cross. for sure. Furia have not had yeah. three finishes and <laughs> JNAP ties it immediately. Oh, you can see it developing with the space here. Everyone misses the touch. And as soon as it goes weak into the corner, you knew Atomic was just going to dish this middle and hope someone was there for it. Lo and behold, there's Natman right there waiting. Yuria had a very shaky finish to a couple of those games with NRG back in round one. And they've let this one get away. G2 snatching it back. And it looks like overtime looming unless Card's got something up his sleeve and he does not. <laughs> we go to OT in game one. Uh, what a fun start. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's tough to beat the last minute comeback. Everyone loves to see it. Doesn't matter who's on the pitch. Seeing it a lot in North America as well. You remember what Shopify One Rebellion goal. pulled off a couple yeah. weeks ago. Chicago over Kayo and Atomic cuts in front of Card. More possession for G2. They didn't have this as much in the early stages of regulation, but they came alive with about a minute and a half remaining. And all of a sudden it's been G2's game only a matter of when rather than if they would score. Ooh, okay. I really did wonder what Kyle was going to go for there. The answer, the punt and steal the boost. And see if something happens. Young, he's going so hard right there. He's like, okay, if this touch gets out into the middle, I'm definitely beating them. Again, very speculative, but he's too far forward. The touch doesn't come through cleanly. Kind of gets tipped back over his shoulder and they just give up a freebie back the other way. That's just... Uh, the, the aggressive nature of South American teams kind of coming back to bite them right there. Well, that almost looked like my high school team at times. Just have the third man camping in the middle of the field, throwing caution to the wind. Empty net behind them. G2. Three unanswered goals starting from about 30 seconds left in regulation. Turning this game and this series completely on its uh, head. Man, oh, oh man. Lee. Let's talk about, uh, yeah, yeah. I Can we talk, talk about, about Furia uh, for a moment? What's going on? How about, how about we talk about both of the, <laughs> yeah, no. the, the now North American but Sam teams? Uh, neither one of them getting a win. Phase, uh, I believe the score was like 4 0 for over complexity. Mm. So, yeah, not good there. Furia, obviously not happy with that turnaround. Uh, on the scoreline, uh, but you guys might be happy with your your underdogs, both Optic and NRG winning their first games. Ah. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's pretty nice. And then uh, just for the eliminations, I do want to mention a uh, 26 Rising app actually up 1-0 over Ghost right now. So Ghost, uh, yeah, not looking good for them, especially just getting scored on a second ago. Time is a ticking for them, that's for sure. Yep, tough luck for Ghost too. They go game five with Shopify Rebellion in round two, and now, down to 26 rising, certainly not where they want to be. We hope you want to be right here on Aquadome with us with a banger of a 2-0 match here between G2 and Furia. Looked like Furia had game one in the bag and then all of a sudden G2 came right up from the back, overtook them. Kayo over to Card, longtime duo does not connect for a goal here. And Yan right there in Atomic's grill. Everybody kind of bunched up in the corner with Chicago waiting at the net. And he's enough of a presence to force Kayo to make an adjustment. Oh, great Good pass. Ah, uh, yeah. Great pass to Yanks. Unfortunately, just couldn't really size it up to put it in between the goalposts. And I was kind of thinking about what I wanted to see out of Furia in this game, too. 
And the funny thing is, I, I don't think they actually need to change anything. I think they played the game that they like to play. And when it comes to car soccer, I think that's the most advantageous thing you can do when you're a professional team. You don't want to sit there and be like, OK, let's try and outlast G2. You know that's not going to work. It's like, don't waste your time doing something. Go try and do what you do best. And more often than not, it tends to work out for you. The only thing that you hope for is the refinement and the timing that they go for those really aggressive plays. Like right there from Yanks, that's the right time. It just came down to execu uh, execution, because if he wins that ball, they're going to be in a two-on-two -two with Card coming forward from the back line with a lot of boost, and maybe they get an offensive drive started. The idea is correct. It all comes down to the decision-making at that point, and that's really what came back to haunt Fury, the decision-making at the wrong time. Look at the first four minutes of that last game. Chicago well. scoring here. Upper left exactly where it had to be with Yen trying to get back in time. Oh, that backflip from Kayo just made him a sitting duck. That yeah. comic takes him out. Chicago the perfect slot. And he has to backflip too because he, he needs to see that bounce off the corner there and needs to make sure he's in position. He can't just jump because he would miss the ball. A great recognition from G2 to realize it. He's dead in the water. Again, take another easy one. First four minutes of this series and the second four minutes of this series look like two very, very different stories. You'd swear there were two completely different teams on the field. As Jan gets around Chicago and j -Naps holds his ground, but hard to follow up. Now Kayo still on the same side. They're not working on the opposite half at all. Everything down that one side and G2 there to cut it out every single time. Mm. Now JNAPS, he has Chicago all the way across. Kind of circling around just in case JNAPS can send one across. The defense from Furia, good enough. So Card, well he's been given a lot more time than I would have expected him to be given there with G2 all the way back, getting boosted up and in position. Furia have kind of been afforded an opportunity. Can they take Ooh, advantage of it? Kay. Kyle clears out <gasps> JNAPS, is still dangerous, and Yan's there. Man, like that one looked like it was about to fall apart with this touch from Card. You're like, there's no way that goes in. But the bump that's intended to demo JNAPS ends up tipping off of JNAPS' nose and he panics, can't make the readjustment after he's recovered, and it ends up working out perfectly. And if you're Fury, you just go, yeah, of course. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> we need a little disclaimer down on the bottom of the screen here. Results not typical as JNAPS, oh, what a save by Jan, just getting back. JNAPS bringing that too low to ground and Chicago playing back towards Naps, over to Atomic, the possession from G2, trying to just play Ooh. keep away from Fury and give themselves another opportunity to take the lead. Ooh. That one's Ooh. high, Chicago to follow. Chicago exercising a little bit of Furia playbook there. Get aggressive, range across, and realize, hang on, if they miss, I'm going to be right there for it. He has full faith in Atomic in the midfield there that if something gets over his head, he can handle it. That allows him to be positioned that far forward and make a great reaction off a big touch from his teammate. All well, the hits keep coming, one side or the other. Jan trying to get in JNAP's way, and he very patiently defends that effort. And Atomic weaving around Kayo. Kayo right back in, hard off the backboard. JNAP's up quickly, and he'll clear that away, give his teammates time to get reset. Card for Jan again. No, I'll call his own number, in fact. And it was not the play. Possession remains, though, for Furia. It's Card through JNAP's. But then Atomic off of card, has Chicago streaking down the middle. And that's a big break for G2. They finally clear the zone, but not for very long. The sense of urgency oh certainly God. there now for Furia, trying to avoid an 0-2 deficit in this series against a team that beat them a couple of weeks ago in the fall open. Here's Atomic stopped okay. by Jan. That's Two a on great one. win. Two on one, oh. and the one stands tall. Follow up, oh. oh, I think Chicago got knocked away, and we're yep. tied. Yanks was the support player here for Card. You can stop it with one, but you can't do it again. Huge demo and great positioning from Kayo. Not getting too aggressive and pushing too far forward on the two on one and thinking maybe if they miss the shot, I gotta clean up. You can't afford to be caught too far forward. Played a little bit safer. He's able to collect on a second chance with a big heads up play from Yanks with a huge bump. So here we are again, two, two, 
20 seconds left. I promise you this is not a rerun. You can tell it's a different map. <laughs> Maybe the same result though. Overtime is still looming now. Out of the corner, Atomic at the second touch. Oh, kind of floater denied. Oh. And Jan gets there as well in JNAP's way. Only three seconds remain. Oh, they might. Whoa, in Chicago, a crucial touch to preserve the game and maybe an opportunity again for G2. Jan will just clear this away and Atomic will keep it alive as well. G2 not hey, willing to just settle for OT oh. and Card comes up empty. Uh, you wanted to see him hit the perfect banger top right corner to, to close that out with the next collision point. Sometimes it's not meant to be though. Chicago wants to close it and kick off. But this is what I wanted to see out of that V1 G2 match. You know, this should be a matchup. Anytime you play G2, you give as good as you get. You got to be willing to go out there and fight for possession. And this is the result. It puts you in a position to win the game. You can't just hope to outlast G2. Clean win right at Yan down the middle. Chicago out of the corner. Jay Naps again, this time just wide. He had the overtime winner early in OT in game one. Yan looking to pay that one back now. Chicago makes the initial stop. Card comes in and a little miscommunication mm. between Card and Kayo. That forced Kayo to hesitate and it puts Card in an awkward spot. But Atomic couldn't slot one from the deep wing and it's Yan now against Chicago. Kayo with Card in behind him. Great idea. Can he get the pass out? No, he can't. I mean, even if he can't execute on the actual pass, the, the execution of catching it with the wheels to take a little bit of speed off the ball and throw off the positioning of that G2 defender slows down that G2 counterattack because the extra person has to come through and try and get it. Card wants to do it himself and can't execute on the air dribble, but this one just going to be bandied about the G2 half as Furia continue trying to poke and prod and see if they can find a gap. G2 had the opening lead. Oh. It was Furia that had to come back a couple of times and equalize. Okay. Now Card. All the defenders in front of him, but all the King's horses and all the King's men could not stop Card again. Great patience from Card. Don't immediately rip it towards the back wall because you see no one up there. He executes, capitalizes on the space that is afforded to him at the midfield line, picks apart the defense, finds the hole in the net, hits a perfect shot. Jane Apps is good, but not perfect. And Furia tie up the series. Oh, leafy boy. We yeah. got a tied up series here. What else is going on around the scene? Yeah, funness. Because uh, as Furia bites back, so does complexity. They take one over phase. <laughs> uh, we do We do also have uh, down in the elimination matches, 26 Rising currently sitting uh, at match point against Ghost Gaming. So uh, that's uh, not looking good for Ghost as Rogan and FOB end up sitting 1-1. NRG, though, you're going to like this one. They're up 2-0 right now for Gen G with a one goal lead wow. in game three. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I honestly, it, from what I'm seeing, it looks like these European players came in and still have respect for NRG. So they're giving space <laughs> to NRG and Justin's just doing magic things. Uh, we'll see if maybe they turn that around. But yeah, they're, they're winning right now. So NRG looking good. Um, and then, of course, uh, Optic Gaming and V1 fighting. V1 had a 6 1 win to tie it up. This Oof. Game. Yeah. That's that's the beast mode wizardry game, I'm sure of it, if I go back and look at the numbers. <laughs> well, here we go. One all with dueling 3-2 overtime victories. Both teams have scored first and lost the game in which they scored first. So who intentionally gives up the opening goal here to secure victory in game three? <laughs> Clearly the, the optimal strategy is give away three goals. But you My do strategy have every to... time I play rank. Yeah, how often does it work? Uh, never. Card <laughs> will score here 35 seconds into the opener. Huge opener. This this is just great aggression for Kyle. I mean, it's good communication, obviously, from the two players back saying that we've got the ball or, or we're going to win it. And Kyle's free to go try and get that demo. and. It's all on him to just make the big play, and he does it. I love to see the aggression from Furia trying to come out and say, we run this show, not you. And now just the clock starting to tick on how long it'll take G2 to equalize as Jan 
Lost control there. Hard takes over. Shane Apps up to meet him. Dueling demos from Kayo and Chicago. Both took each other out. What else is going to happen? This card right at Chicago. All the way across, trying to change perspective for Furia. They're not phased one bit. Here comes Jan. He's still got his flip. Got another one lined up, and Atomic sweeps it away. Okay, and great support from Chicago there. Really trying to get G2 back on the right track. Of They're the ones in control of possession. And slight mispositioning there. Gets them out of a jam on the Fury at half. They have to reapproach. That one found its way through the wall. Still Furia on possession. Chicago, a clever oh. stop. And another shot sailing just high. Furia, if they somehow drop this game, they're going to be looking back at that five-second sequence there going, how did we leave that one on the table? Well, the, the thing about it is Chicago's positioning on the backboard forces the shot all the way to the back post. It's like that's the only place where it's guaranteed a goal. And that's a lot tougher to execute than if you just try and power it by him. Little stutter step in the midfield from uh, Furia doesn't really get him too much, and unfortunately Chicago kind of miss hitting the ball slows down that G2 counterattack. They could have had a lot of pressure right there. Card jumped, but Kyle calls him off and takes charge. Both teams playing to a standstill now at the halfway mark. It's Furia's early not goal, fair. though. There's the difference in <laughs> JNAP. Soft shot did not fool the defense trying to go in behind him. Now Card trying to play around Atomic. Not happening. Kayo across, Jane Apps is there instead. Demolition on Kayo, and then Chicago gets taken out as well. And he'll have to respawn at the back. It's just a <laughs> war zone out here on DFH Stadium. You two trying anything. Throw up all the fireworks, see if you can catch someone looking in the place they shouldn't, just distracted by all the stimulus that's happening in front of the goal. Great presence and poise. That theory of defense, Andy Tall, two minutes though, and G2's got a pretty decent grip right now. Yanks finally able to at least buy some breathing room. Oh, how and one quickly better. did this develop? Oh, Kayo up ahead, and Yan not giving the defense any time to react to this. Chicago's oh, watching, man. and he's still watching. What a shot. I mean, the pass from Kayo's perfect too. Like, yeah, Yanks wins the first challenge to get them out of their half, but Kyle puts that ball on a dime for him. He had no boost, couldn't make any adjustments, didn't have to stop, just let fly. And you're right, Chicago left staring. Well, it's a two-goal lead. This is what Furia had around this point in game one. And then two goals about 12, 15 seconds apart brought G2 right back into it. They took that game in overtime thanks to this man, Jane Out. Got the win, but it's harmlessly through to Card. JNAP taking his time. Baiting Yan into a play with Atomic there to follow up. Kayo keeps it close to the vest. We saw this, though, against NRG. Furia playing very close to their own back line and not willing to just clear it away. Oh, that goes off the crossbar as Furia catches a break. They give it NR NRG, wow, they give G2 that look again. <laughs> They will not get away with it. The same could probably be said for NRG later there we as go. Chicago scores with 45 to go. It had to happen eventually. G2 really knows they need to get something going and love the patience from Jane Apps. He doesn't commit to going all the way off the ceiling because Furia was ready for it. They've hit a couple of nice opportunities up off there, so Furia well and wary of it. Great job from Jane Apps letting it come back down and Chicago Still playing second man, good support role. This time he's in the perfect position. Drills one bottom of the net to give G2 a chance with 30 seconds. It just feels that she's like, uh, Furia in the final minute is a very, very different team with a lead as Chicago sends one away. Card didn't have a lot of pace on that shot. And now Atomic stuffs Card. One to beat there, Yan coming up. And Chicago will try and launch this downfield. He's got Jane Apps to help out as well. It's open off the backboard and Jan gets there in time. 14 seconds left. Atomic did not dive in. Now he'll pick his spot. Ooh. Try to pop one out towards oh, Jane Apps. No, nobody's there. Chicago had to come in from midfield. Now Atomic right. trying to keep possession for himself. Kayo swats it away. And now Chicago what tried to serve one up for Jane Apps and Kayo obliterates them. And what? G2 falling to Furia. 
Furia holds the lead this time, Achieves, but boy, was it a little dicey. That's big brain from Kayo, man. Like, talk about understanding the flow of play and where that ball is headed and who has to be in charge of it. I mean, that ball gets chipped up into the middle and thinking, yep, j -Naps is next, and you go headhunting and you nail him just to kill the opportunity. What a play. So Furia is on match point. Leaf, who else is on match point? Well, I'll, I'll give you a better than match point. I'll, I'll oh. give you a finish their series. Oh, let's go. SSG 3-0 over Shopify Rebellion and NRG 3-0 over Gen G. Mm, wow. Okay. That's what I'm wondering. Is, up, huh? Okay. Now I have to sit here and continue wondering where to put in our G. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> They're confusing us all. Uh, and again, on the elimination front here, uh, FOB is actually up uh, on match point and they're three one wow. with a minute 30 left over rogue so we know it's not elimination for rogue but this is great for for fob because they get to keep playing uh and sorry one more 26 rising uh they're on match point against ghost okay uh we're gonna see some teams get eliminated real soon and while rogue would not be completely eliminated by missing out on top eight they would be real real close sitting on only those four points Having a couple of 0-3s oh, to their boy. credit as Card shot in the end. Finishes off a good furious sequence, but an even better stop by G2 oh, defensively. And and this is how we're starting game four. You think these players are all warmed up by now, Achieves? I, I, I'll be honest. When I see Yanks hit a, a read like that, the last time I saw a player hit a read like that, extra at the World Championship and the Grand Final. And then as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, they're winning. If, if you're making reads like that, you're just going to win. Oh, and Card will get the opening goal again for Furia. This just breaks down from G2. Atomic kind of oh. a little indecisive just there. Jan up in his grill. Furia 1-0. It's tough for Atomic there because obviously he's got the ball cam on behind him. And sure, he may know that Yanks is there in the midfield and turned on it. Fake kickoff here from Furia. But Atomic has to watch that ball come over his shoulder and make his best judgment about when Yanks is going to get there. And, and unfortunately for him, he was dead wrong as this one ticks off the coast, uh, the, the crossbar, excuse me, not the post. And unfortunately, Fury again gives one right back. Big challenge from Chicago to keep it in the mix. I want to correct something I said earlier. Rogue will not be eliminated. They actually are into the, the Invitational. So, Rogue fans. Ah. Come back. It's okay. Come back. Y'all still have some life. You're on life support, but y'all have life here in the fall. Here's Kayo sending one high. And because Card and Kayo both up, Yan has to stay back just in case. He couldn't come up. If he had, I think he easily would have finished that play. Now Card, good win. Atomic is right there, and that's a good little hesitation move by Atomic to win that ball. Now Ooh. Card, around the corner of JNAP's not fooled by it at all. Love the positioning from G2. Now they're really starting to get a grip on where Furia are trying to place the ball when they go for some of those really aggressive touches and reads in the midfield. And that bodes well for G2. Hard up towards Yan. All tied up very early on here in what could be the final game of this series if Furia can reclaim the lead. All boosted up. That's not a concern. It really hasn't been a concern at all in this series for Furia. They have not let G2 starve them out really at any point. Atomic takes that away from Kayo. Card all the way back to the backboard. He'll power this out towards Yan. Right there at Atomic, though he didn't get the touch he wanted. He didn't get any touch at all, in fact. And a chance out for Furia as G2 maybe had blinked. Not so much. Another recovery from Jane Absen. Back into this vicious He's cycle moving. of ping pong we go. Yanks is moving around the pitch, yeah, man. No kidding. <laughs> if there's a play to be made, you can bet he's going to try to be right on it. Looking a little bit like Rettles has looked at times for Optic. Yeah. Want to know where he is? Just look for the ball. Chicago. Oh, is that just in? It's on. No, just a little bit wide. Just outside the dotted line at the end. Of course, you can't afford to give up on that play if you're either side as Kayo bounces one out. Now you take a deep breath if you for your, uh, you knew you got away with that one. You may have to start to dial it back just a little so you don't allow that freebie because you don't want to go to game five. As well as you're playing, all bets are off at that point. Great save. Card has to make two. This one's going to stay in the box and Kayo uncontested. 
And I'm not sure if that was the right touch. That buys a lot of time for G2 to get back in the mix. And thankfully, Yank's already on the back door with a booming clear. And Chicago trying to drop one down to Atomic, and Card is all over it. JNAP's there with a great win. And Atomic just go. lets that go. He was a decoy, so the defense had to freeze, and they react to Chicago's shot with Kayo making the save. And JNAP's couldn't get there in time, but Atomic can. That's just frantic on both back lines here. Either side, one yeah, bit off. of hesitation away from conceding a Ooh. goal. The card gets back in time to shut down JNAP's effort. Now G2's on it, though. They know. Fury likes to move the ball in this way. They're starting to get a handle on it. You got to be careful, Fury. You want to close it out in four. Because I think if you go to five, G2's got to figure it out enough. Oh, yeah. And, oh, he's looking for card. Instead, he found JNAPS. That's not your teammate as JNAPS takes out Kayo. Now Chicago just a little too slow to meet up with Yan. But that means he can still be forward, and Kayo has to deal with that. More importantly, finding a teammate. Card running ahead for the demolition on Jane Apps. But nothing else happening there. Both teams just seem destined for another overtime here at Utopia. Kayo off of Chicago, and Atomic had to jump back into action. That was unexpected for G2. But they improv well, and it's Atomic launching it downfield with 15 to go. A card, indirect for Yan. Try to push Ooh. that away from JNAPS. Indirect, not on. He Kyle got the plate off his crossbar. And Yan from inside the net makes the save. Oh, if they couldn't score then, nobody's going to score. As this one hits the ground, we go to OT. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> what, what a read. The, the defense, a lot of pressure being put over the back shoulder of those Fury defenders. They're playing out of their minds right now, but how long can it last? Surely not forever. I mean, both these teams needed a kickoff just to reset. It didn't feel like anybody was ever going to score. If that continued on, we could have been there for another 10 minutes. So here we are in overtime, which has no time limit. We could be here for another 10 minutes if that keeps up. Kayo towards the backboard. Damn it, and yeah. Atomic there in his way. Card against Chicago, who just got a piece as Card nearly ended the series and put Furia into the main event. Now Card around Atomic. He's got Jane Apps waiting on the backboard. Chicago on the ground. He'll take to the skies <laughs> and make the stop. But G2 have to play very patiently there and finally bomb this away. You can see Furia saying, there's a little extra space. Try and make it work. And Jane Apps wants that one back. Uncontested, definitely a, a hand up in the net for sure if it had been on target, but JNAPS knows he probably could have placed that one and closed this game out. I don't think the defense would have been able to react in time if it was on target. Chicago, blocked by Card. JNAPS oh, with demo. the demo from Chicago, and JNAPS sent us to Champions Field. Oh, it all comes back to bear. Finally, Card just misses the double touch to get that one past the midfield line or at least give himself a chance at a challenge. And G2 right there for it. They sussed out the, the distance perfectly. Chicago aggressive as always, finally connecting on a demo. And G2 brings the arms to bear in game four and fights all the way back to force game five with a great offensive showing. Huge defensive showing from Fury. Yeah. But unfortunately, none of it matters if you don't win the game. So we have one more game to go here in Leaf, I believe. Uh -huh. Everything else is all done. Correct. This will be the last one, which is great. Look at that. We just we just knew it was going to be a great series. Perfect. So we, we were showing it to you guys. Yeah. Uh, complexity dropping to phase three one. They did not manage through. Big one for Ghosts, though. They are done. They're not going to be able to make it to the Invitational with their loss three to one to 26 rising. Uh, and of course, uh, FOB does make it through Rogue. V1 bounces back against Optic Gaming to take theirs three to one and Dignitas with a 3-0 over Axel. So yeah, this is the this is the last one here. I mean, the only real intense one I think was for Ghost Gaming because now they don't make the invitation. All the rest here though, it's still important to, to make a statement and I'm excited to see how the rest of Fury G2 goes because closer than maybe a lot of the fans spot at Chiefs. It's stressful. I mean, this, this <laughs> the, the Game four, I think, was the peak of 
you need to execute every single touch. Because if you didn't, you were getting pressure put on you. And then you had to double down and execute even more on defense. Like this whole series has been the skills challenge. That's what this is. Well, Champions Field presented by all the drama of G2 and Furia. Kayo couldn't catch up to this one. Jane Apps does. And Chicago hard off the backboard. Looking like Card was trying to hit maybe Jan in transition. Oh, with the and the demolition opens things up, but Chicago is right there. Going to take a lot more than that to get by either of these defenses. Achieves all these games, one goal affairs. We've had overtimes as well. A couple of three twos, a couple of two ones. There is not much that separates these two juggernauts. And certainly while G2 has gotten the better of them historically, it does feel like, I think to me, Furia playing the better series overall, and it's been G2 playing catch up, but that's exactly the point. G2 has the adaptation to figure it out and has a chance here to continue that streak of wins against Furia. Jane apps up ahead towards Atomic, card in the way, but Chicago will try and hit him. And Jan also intercepts that play. Now Jane apps. This will bounce out and Kayo is right there. Chicago full take a boost, but he'll give way to Atomic. Talked about Furia not ever really being in a position where they get boost starved. Same has been true for G2, even though we've seen a couple of steals at crucial points from Furia. G2 has still always had a backup plan. It's atomic lob one to the backboard, and Kayo is right there. A, a lot of people prioritizing their own corner boosts. Like, yeah, if you steal one, that's okay, but like people are, are making sure to go out of their way. Like, yep, I'm picking up my corner. I'm not letting this get stolen away. I'll give up a touch on the ball if it means we keep boost. And they're right. How fast paced this game has been playing, you need boost to keep up. That's starting to become a focal point as I think maybe a lot of coaches also trying to find ways to bring their team to the next level. Atomic missed one high, and had it been on target, nobody was going to get to it. A missed opportunity for G2, and everybody back in front of their own net to fend off Furia. Here comes Jan. Flip reset, bring it to ground, and Jane Apps there in the way. Atomic oh, holds man. his ground and stops Kayo. That's just understanding from Atomic. Like, he knows he's he's not defending the shot. He's defending that pass, and he's just focused on when Jan finally commits to where he's going with the ball, kind of trying to get a little bump on Chicago there, open up a little space potentially for Furia, but it's tough right here. And, of course, the one thing that finally breaks through, <laughs> Furia is not expecting We've seen Jan back quite a bit at times where maybe against other teams and maybe if they hadn't given up okay. that winner like they did in game one, maybe he would have been up more. But maybe that one play still kind of lingering in the back of Jan's mind. Now he's willing to take to the skies. He's got the flip reset in Chicago there to make sure that never came off the backboard. Gotta say, liking the idea from uh, Furia here in game five. Okay, fine, we're playing like full speed ahead, every touch is go, 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 having to make the snap, uh, slap, instant reads, and it's not easy, and now you get into game five and Furia's starting to go for misdirection. They're gonna go for it, and then they pull off the ball or something, and they're trying to throw off that timing, like right here, Kyle throws everyone off the scent, and JNAPS figures it out and gets to the back post, and that's what Furia is now trying to do. It's the one last trick in the bag for game five. Starting to feel like overtime territory here with no score in the final minute. Card right at JNAP. Not bothered one bit. Okay. A good ball one by JNAP to find Atomic. Going underneath the low 50, forces Kayo to scream back. And then Kayo comes across again oh, for yet another stop. Here goes Card. And JNAP's going to have that easy stop. Can Jan get to this? He can. He made 30 it. seconds. Card put nothing behind the shot. JNAP's the savior medal. But now G2. Having to work for it here to keep Furia at bay and try to get this to another overtime. Great positioning, Yanks understanding that JNAP's bringing the ball down. His timing was perfect. Float across the middle. Can he get back to it? Doesn't matter. JNAP's too good. Chicago one on two now with Yanks in the backfield. 
They got the demo, but card of Void Chicago coming through. Four seconds, Kayo shot. Defended well by Chicago. Not quite to ground yet. Ooh. Riverboat Gamblers here. Furia not willing to settle for OT. And now we'll okay. finally get there. <laughs> I was about to say, if you allow a counterattack because you mistouched it, you're going to be so mad. <laughs> so here we go. Yet another overtime between Furia and G2. Winner goes into the top eight tomorrow. Loser. Gets a couple more shots at it, but they're going to be wondering what might have been. Ooh. As card denied by Jane Apps, and Yan will not get to that corner boost. Jane Apps did instead. Raced all the way back downfield, and everybody boosted up well for Furia as Yan over to Kayo. Back out towards card, and that caught card by surprise. Kayo and card have not been on the same page at critical times here in this series, which is bizarre given the length of time that they've been together as teammates you'd think the chemistry would just be infallible as atomic goes by this ball hey. and card will take over love the idea there from atomic see if you can just pull off the ball maybe get a bump or something but in general g2 starting to regain and assert control in the overtime here's a chance and atomic wisely just control it throw it into the corner by time reset and i'll we'll be okay Despite all the trials and tribulations here on either side, nothing separates G2 and Furia. One goal for the top eight. Jane Apps no longer there. Neither is Atomic. Just touched it. Awkward. I mean, this is where Fury's been the most successful, though. They start racking up demolitions, and they get G2 kind of looking over their shoulder a bit and a little uncomfortable, but Atomic downfield, and Kayo the initial stop. Jan's got to get out to this quick and does with Jane Apps lurking, yep. Yep. and Card gets that around Chicago. Opportunity now for Yan, but he didn't have any boost, and he had to steal some out of the corner. And he wins the ball is in support here. Because he stole that boost, he's able to get in position. Unfortunately, the positioning kind of falls apart. Atomic... He was thinking maybe that's the open net, but wisely, hard, well aware, like, hang on, we're over committing. Readjust. Fury regain control of the midfield line. Card diving towards that corner wall, and Atomic lets that go, so Chicago can take charge. Nobody else was diving in for Fury. Card couldn't get around for a shot. Jane apps around Kayo, and Chicago forces Yan to retreat just a little bit. This is out and available for Jane apps and Yan. Dust it right back in his face, and Card sends it back downfield. Half of an extra game gone by now, and still no closer to determining a winner here in sudden death. A lot to ask for everyone. Half to remain spotless, and Card is like, okay, we need boost. We're gonna buy a little time. We're just gonna dribble for a few feet and see what happens then. And that's the right idea. You don't want to rush into anything at this point. And has Kyo in front. And Atomic will just drop that down to Jane Epps in Chicago, who, I mean, Jane Epps got the ball, Chicago got Jane Epps, and they still managed to at least get something resembling a shot off. And Atomic oh. out into space, and Jane Epps coming on, but boy, that broke down in a hurry for G2. Unfortunately, hasn't hurt them so much. Yeah, it, it worked out because Fury kind of hit a missed ball and, and didn't quite go the way they needed to. And that allows that double commit to kind of amount to not much. Atomic just smashes one and hopes it's fast enough. Gets the boost deal as well. So big clears in order for Furia here. Buy the map presence to equalize the boost game. Uh, Atomic got a piece of card there, but card had done enough with his positioning to throw off the attack. Everybody back to full strength as Jan gets chased into his own net. And he'll be the one at the back here. That corner boost will not spawn for him, doesn't matter. He doesn't need much of the tank, but he's got plenty. And Chicago will guide this all the way across. Boost steal though by Yan. Keep that in mind as- Oh, demo! Got that demo! And Kaya will score! Furia to the top eight! Atomic believed, he was like, guys, JNAPS has this clear a hole. Oh, no, I don't have the ability to get it. He was so ready to go play support. Finally. His teammates can't compensate, and Atomic is caught leaning. Furia, 3-0, what a show. It, it really felt like when Furia got away from physical plays and going after demolitions, they they weakened themselves. They, they made themselves very vulnerable to G2's attack and kind of let G2 get too comfortable defensively. Once they wrapped 
that back up, especially late in game five, G2 was scrambling and you could tell they were so, so uncomfortable. Take a breath, Lee. You good? Yeah, I'm, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm still trying to bring myself down from the excitement of that. That was a, that was a, that was a great match. I mean, like, Here's the thing. I mean, it sucks for G2 because they, they got to try again. But based off what we've seen there, I have a feeling G2 is not going to have a problem making their way through in, in probably the next round uh, because it just looked fantastic. They just had to play an amped up Fury that's been, in my opinion, getting more and more momentum as they've gone through the day. But G2 is a consistent team that we expect to be in that spot. Maybe some craziness happens, but it'll have to be on the other side of a break because we got to take a break to get the next matches all set up as the North American fall uh, continues. We, we have to. So don't go anywhere.